to, to Boo Boo and in general catching up. So I tried to go into Gary's Stick'em on Saturday and found I was blocked, which is a new one, on Stick'em. Been kicked, but... So I just created another account I've been thinking of creating, but I had no reason to need it now except for going into Gary's room anyway to ask him what the fuck his problem was. Um, but I, I, I... So I made a Fight Club account because I, I did think uh, I might want to play with... Uh, Sponsoring some sort of stick'em room in association with Fight Club at some point, and so he explained to me that yes, it was his anger that I uh, was sympathetic to Hannibal, and he have even praised him, which I did, you know, a week ago when I also went to stick'em. Um. So yeah, but I hadn't been watching many videos. What problem with working on this website um, is that you know I'm losing track of certain conversations and things I would I would keep up with. Plus, being blocked by Gary means I basically don't see most of his stuff, or I have to you know go do it on demand, and conversations might have moved on and whatnot. But so I I, I was programming last night. I made this video last night, and the sound didn't come through. Stupid. So, um, you know, and I kind of caught up. I saw Hannibal's latest videos. Um, I watched uh, the Tickety Boo Boo's videos, you know, for the last week about that I hadn't seen. And so this is uh, a reply to Boo Boo primarily. Um, <clears throat> you know, where to start? I mean, one, you want to talk a lot about how it seems like he's making a fool of himself and doesn't know anything about language. What you've really shown is that he's citing credible theories on language, especially from an anthropological point of view, which doesn't mean it'll be the right one, but um, so, and yet there, and there's other things, so, you know, if you're saying, well, you haven't cited all the people that disagree with you, you know, it's not his fault to go find somebody, I mean, you're saying Gary's ideas are similar to Gould's, who's a paleontologist, I believe, slightly different from an anthropologist, but you know, and you're claiming that he's making an argument from authority, and then you go, it's Stephen Gould, for God's sake. What? You know, and he's not making an appeal to authority just because you could quote mine a few things of him saying, hey, I'm going to get my degree in this. He, he's saying that he's in, you know, in contact with primary information, and it's not like he's expecting you to take his word for it. He shows you the citations. You can check them. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot, to a certain degree, you react a lot of treating Gary that way. I mean, what? Okay, look, you must try to understand that anybody that demands a civil conversation, that, that always keeps the conversation civil, is not even a candidate for talking to Gary. Okay? Because somebody that, that is like that and says, well, here's what I believe, look, here's the citation, and then they're called, well, you're a fat fucktard, you can't get laid, blah, 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 blah. You know? And, and you want to tell us how things seem and who's making a fool of themselves. Well, let me tell you how it seems. Your little attempt to forgive the, uh, the incredibly dominant phenomena of rudeness from antinatalists, you... you seek to use the technical definition of ad hom. Well, let me tell you how it seems to us. One, it seems you don't quite get the technical issues, and many of the examples of ad hom are in fact ad hom, technically. And even those that are not, that does not make being a rude prick saying random things okay. And if you do it a lot, it will become ad hom because as soon as it is affecting the audience, so even though you don't say he's a drunk and so you shouldn't believe his argument by saying you're a fucking idiot retard and you're a drunk, it conveys a relationship. And as soon as that has been conveyed in the communication, then, you know, technical definitions of ad hom come into play. But it's also a blurry area, which doesn't really matter, considering it's pretty fucked up to call someone a child rapist when you're discussing uh, natalism. You know, just like calling somebody a child murderer is not the most productive way 
to discuss natalism, and that's one that pro-lifers like. So, um, yeah, besides, wasn't this those videos back and forth about whether or not the human species is becoming less violent or not? And now we're off on this language argument that seems like some sort of a gotcha. At least I've lost track of how this is supposed to get back to the real issue, which is how doomed the human race is by our nature and past nature and guesses as to where we are going in the future. Your attempt to say that uh, a categorical imperative like murder uh, isn't a good level. You have to break it down and find the categorical elements. Well, I'm sorry, but the elements are always going to break down further and further and further. And your idea that there's got to be some, you know, categorical imperatives down there at the bottom is like the belief that the fountain of youth has to be out there somewhere and you're just going to keep looking. But there's logical arguments uh, indicating that we should not expect that. I know a lot of classical epistemology is based on maintaining that faith that, well, there's no other way for there to be knowledge uh, unless we find a categorical imperative. Well, yeah, there is. There's the sense imperative. You think in color and sound, touch and taste. That's, that's what it comes back to. That's what's at the root of this. Not categorical imperatives like golden drops of crystallized dew from the idealized world of forms that somehow precipitate into the real universe and from which everything grows. It comes from our senses. It comes from our senses. The law of identity comes from our senses and so on and so forth so you I'll debate you on categorical imperatives right I'll debate you live on that if you like and I'll just even tell you in advance you're gonna have to come up with examples of these because so far in Western philosophy all they've ever come up with is uh, a deduction that surely they must be out there because you can't have a brick building without bricks and we think we have a brick building and therefore there must be bricks but the truth is we don't even have a brick building we are not building knowledge out of abstractions it's the other way around we are building the abstractions from experiences abstractions are the result of us experiencing the world and looking for patterns. And we see a pattern and we're going to go, that must be what the world comes from. No, that's what your understanding of the world comes from. 